We're speaking this morning to Menika Devi. She is the founder of Miss Amazing Malaysia. Thank you so much, Menika, for joining us on The Light Pleasure's Breakfast. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you for inviting. Now, we want to get to know you a little bit more, Menika. Uh, can you tell us about you growing up? Okay. Um, I grew up with my grandparents back in Seremban. Uh, oh, Seremban girl. Okay, yes. okay. I mean, I was born in KL, but I was living with my grandparents uh, at the, since the age 8 up to 14 years old. Oh, so you went to school in Seremban yes, as well? Yes, yes. I went to school. I went. I mean, my primary were all in Seremban. And then I came back to KL uh, for my secondary and I lived with my parents. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. Now, um, we read that you were very young when you got married. Uh, yes, I was. 22, was it? I got married 20. <laughs> wow, okay. Oh, you got married at the age of 20. 20, yeah. So, did this sort of change your life? Like, why was this, why this decision to get married at such a young age? All right. Um, at that point of time, I mean, my parents were divorced and uh, and uh, I wanted to have a very settled life uh, of course being in that age all we wanted was uh, all I wanted was a wedding but not a marriage but being young at the same time we were not we were not mature enough to think what is life ahead after marriage mm. so I started I mean the good thing about being married at a very young age is uh, we started uh, being more mature I was more mature more responsible and everything that I take was everything I do was very serious when I was into my career life it was serious because I had to share my uh, expenses with my ex-husband you know these are the things that um, it made me a better person uh, and it was very life changing was so he the same age as you or no no he was not uh, he he he's seven years he was seven years older to me okay, okay. Yeah. so it sort of made you grow up much quickly yes. quicker yeah, yeah yeah and you said that he's your ex-husband yes so you you are divorced now yes i am so you're a single mother uh single mother normally refers to if i'm taking care of the boys mm. so the boys live with their dad right so uh i am uh I'm a mother of two. Obviously. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now let's talk about your boys. You have two boys. Yes. Um, one is sixteen already. And the younger one? He's eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sixteen and eight. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell us about your your son. I know your older son. He has. Uh, he was born slightly different. Yes. Tell correct. us about him. Okay. Um, his name is Sanjeev. All right. So when Sanjeev was born, uh, after a month. Uh, it was really challenging because the doctor diagnosed that he had an ASD, atrial septal defect, a hole in the heart. Okay, so that was my first phase, mm. going through those mixed feelings and, you know, thinking that, oh my God, is my son going to be alive tomorrow? You know, at that time, you were really young and everybody wanted to take charge of the situation, you know, being that you're a young mother. And as time passes by, I realized that he was not communicating well, in mm -hmm. fact, he was not even saying hello or all he could say is mummy, mm -hmm. daddy, and and at that time he was five years old. I got a little bit, I got a little worried. Then I took him to the psychologist. But prior to that, this boy he is really talented. I I got him into TV commercials, so I normally tell the directors that he cannot read. But you can show him a uh, audio, or uh, you can show him a video, and he can follow accordingly. So those that could read, they could finish. They they will normally take more than five takes. But for Sanjeev, he could only watch it once, and he can do it in two takes. Mm. Right. So he's really good in that. So, when so he has this like photographic memory. Exactly. Yeah. So when I when uh, when we brought him to the psychologist, uh, it was really heartbreaking. They they said that oh your son has a uh, your son has has MMR, mild mental retardation, and I'm like, no way. Okay, he could do everything except speak. So I'm here for a sp I'm I was expecting for a speech therapy or something. So then I had second opinion. I brought him to another psychologist, uh, which is by the government. Then they said that your son is perfectly fine, but he has a uh, very mild uh, Asperger. Right. Okay. So it was. Uh, it's another brand new start for me. To I, I took every challenge very positively, and I was a part of him. 
I was part of the entire uh, group of Sanjeev. Sanjeev uh, started only reading when he was nine years old. Uh, that was because I got him into a, we got him into a private school. So it was a surprise to me. Bef- pri- uh, six months before he could read and write, uh, six months before he could read and write, the teacher surprised me by having having him as an MC for the school concert. Oh yes, yes. So when I saw him on that stage, he said, "I was in the school for six months, and now I could read, write, and check my mommy's Facebook." <laughs> so that was. <laughs> That was really incredible. Sanjeev is completely, uh, completely well now. He is just like the other, 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 other kids. You know? All the other teenagers, yes, right? right? Yes, sixteen-year-old right. boy. Yes. Okay, but um, you actually took part in a beauty pageant yourself. Yes. When uh, Mrs. India Worldwide yes. Malaysia in 2018. Yeah. So what actually inspired you to want to take part in a beauty pageant after becoming a mom? Okay. Um, I always wanted to be uh, in a beauty pageant when I was younger. But then it, at that point in time, I got married and there's no way that they had... Um, Mrs. Uh, competition. Right. So when they had when they came out with Mrs. India Worldwide, uh, I wanted to try out. Uh, of course, at that time, honestly, I had nothing in mind to win the crown, or I just wanted to uh, have an experience. How is it like being in a beauty pageant? So when I got into the beauty pageant, um, honestly, it it made me. Uh, it was also life changing because. I started taking uh, being a little bit more um, fashionable mm. because we had different different teams in in a weekly basis. I started fulfilling my wardrobes. Mm. You know, I knew what are the importance of taking care of yourself from head to toe. So it was it was a very good uh, learning experience. And yeah. were you interested in all this even before you got married? Because you married at twenty. Yes. So before that, were you? Into all this, I w- I'm always I love fashion. I love dressing up. I love beautifying myself. Um, but it was very chinchai lah, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it was very chinchai. But you know, as time passes by, when I got into the pageant, I had we had a fashion stylist. You know, they will let you know how do you wear. I mean, with this, how do you carry yourself with that? You know, so really, it was it it transformed me quite a lot. And I was when I got into the beauty pageant, I was. 64 kgs and on the grand finals day I I was at 52. Wow. Yes. Yes. In in a matter of a few months. Yes. You lost over 10 kilos. Yeah, it was uh, eight months of uh, workshops and trainings that we had. So, you know, every, all mothers there were they were like, "Wow, slim, tall." And I was the I was left left aside lah because I always felt that I'm I'm the most um at the at the bigger size okay then i took i told myself that when they could be like that you can as well mm. then i started getting into a very um um a very simple diet called keto diet mm. where i i don't consume carb and uh, sugar so okay. i lost quite a lot quite a lot of weight mm. wow yeah. wow keto diet i think dr rajvan has spoken about <laughs> yes, that before uh, as well yeah. yeah maybe that we should try we that we should next. try that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but was that what inspired you to want to start miss amazing malaysia being part of that pageant yeah just to add on to that um having sanjeev in uh, having sanjeev being differently able as well at that time i started um Getting to know a lot, uh, a lot of other uh, kids uh, and people around that which are differently able. Mm. So there, are, there, I got to know this girl, uh, and she was working as an admin in that school. And I started talking to her, and then I realized that she had Down, she she had Down syndrome, but she we we always spoke. Normal, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of uh, she started talking about life, and she always inspired, motivate Sanjeev. Sanjeev, you can do it, you know. So when I start looking at things, uh, I started looking at things differently. Another th- another reason why I got into the pageant is also I wanted to brand myself. I had I had Miss Amazing in my mind way before because I it's inspired by Miss Amazing US. Mm-hmm. I started watching Miss Amazing US. And uh, yeah, I also wanted to brand myself with Mrs. India, and um, 
having friends which are differently able, differently born, I felt that they are just the same. Mm. We are the same, but it's just that they have different functions and we have different functions. And I, yeah, I wanted to redefine the perception of beauty. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So can you tell us more about this pageant, Miss Amazing Malaysia? Okay. Miss Amazing Malaysia is for uh, people that are differently born, all right? Uh, they can be intellectually challenged or they can be they can have physical deformity. So again, I would like to rephrase I I started out with the pageant is to redefine the perception of beauty. You can never find in any beauty pageants in Malaysia or Asia that have one woman which are differently able, mm. either they are on wheelchair or either they are differently born. Mm. So I started thinking if you know I, I do do I do a lot of research. I started watching uh, models which are differently able in overseas. I started seeing them being a newscaster. A Down syndrome can be a top model for pony. You know, these are the these are the things that inspired me, mm. saying that I think uh, in Malaysia we can as well. So I I just it was a very small group at that time. Uh, I went to quite a number of people some of them say that no you're just wasting your time mm. uh, brands will not come to support you because uh, it is it is not something that they want as a ROI return of investment I told myself no let's try let's do it so I form a team and uh, I had I had my first audition from Miss Amazing it was really really successful and the, the brands did come in yes right the brands did come in um Amazingly, not only brands came in, uh, FMB came in. You know, uh, I mean, everybody came to support Miss Amazing Malaysia because it's truly different. Yeah, yeah. But why do you think it's important for these differently abled individuals to to be competing in a pageant that's usually only reserved for beautiful women, quote unquote? Okay. Beauty is very stereotyped in our country, all right? And uh, why is it important for women which are differently able to come forward is because if you don't start somewhere, you will never, you will, it will never happen, all right? Just to be very honest, I had uh, six, six, 12 girls uh, last year. Six were intellectually challenged and six were differently born. Some of them, when they wake up in the morning, they don't even want to see themselves in the mirror. All right, mm. but after coming into the pageant, um, we had this uh, company that contacted us to be featured in several magazines of theirs. Now you see. Now the reason why I'm saying this is, if you if you feel if you feel that you are you are not the same as the rest, you will forever feel the same way. Mm. So you should come forward. Don't pity yourself, and tell yourself that. There is nothing wrong with me. Yeah. So it's not really about winning the um, contest. It's just about participating and showing that. Representing. Exactly, right? The differently abled people. Okay, this is what I normally tell my girls. Every uh, every beauty pageant, everyone that comes into a beauty pageant, they want to win the crown. Mm. If you have the winning spirit in you, that's when you will start being serious about the right. the the pageant. You'll start being serious about the trainings. So, you you don't come in just for the fun of it. You come in to win the crown. Mm. So when you have that goal that I want to win the crown, that's when you will start being really, really serious about the pageantry. Focus, you know, y- you would do well if you have that winning spirit in you. Okay. So how does it work though? I mean, you have some who are intellectually challenged and then you have some who are physically differently born. Yes, correct. You have two, two categories. Two, two categories. Oh, okay. Now, the good thing here is... For my intellectually challenged women, I call them women is because they are all above 16. They're all above 17 years old. All right. So, of course, handling intellectually challenged women are different. Mm. All right. Uh, so, I crowned every one of them and they felt that they were the only one. They, they, they were the only winner. Now, the main reason why I crowned all of them is because getting into the stage is just a huge thing for them being being on the stage and you know following uh, instructions is mm. something something 
big for them, mm-hmm. you know. So I had two categories now. Intellectually challenged, I count all of them. Now, the serious thing is for the for the differently born women. Right. Now, they went through uh, a very typical pageantry where there was Q&A, you know, and then we had top three and top five, you know, and they had to go through several uh, uh, several uh, merits and demerits that we, g- we gave them points and so on. Okay. So it was r- like a typical pageant. Oh, wow. So they have like, uh, for world peace. Uh, they always <laughs> have a speech thing, right? Yes. But for <laughs> the differently born though, do you, um, what do you judge them based on? Uh, in terms of? Like, for example, you say there's top five, there's top three. Yeah. And if they have some form of physical dis- disability mm. or... Uh, what do we, what do you call it? The deformity. Deform, uh, deformity. Physical deformity. Okay. What do you judge them on? Good question. We don't. We the titles that we gave out it has got nothing to do with uh, Miss Body Beautiful or Miss Beautiful Skin. No, it was morely on yourself, Miss Courageous, Miss Best Personality. No, it's about in you. Mm. It's truly skin deep. Mm. So um, we were not judging them based on how they look, because I had girls which are from ninety cm to one six seven cm. Mm. So we did not judge them based on their looks, but we judge them firstly is their behavior and attitude, their commitment towards the pageantry, how they present themselves, how they carry themselves, and how they deliver themselves. Yeah. Okay. Earlier you said that you provide trainings for these girls yeah. in your pageant. Yeah. So it'll be different trainings for the intu- intellectually challenged and also the different, uh, yes, differently born. Yes. All right. Um, now uh, there are some trainings which we only cater for the intellectually challenged. Uh, but whatever that we cater for the intellectually challenged, the physical deformity girls joined. Uh, they join along. They are more like guiding them. Um, but we also had. Uh, work trainings like uh, self-transformation trainings which are only catered for the women which are differently able where the intellectually challenged girls uh, may not be able to suit themselves in that training. Mm. We had a lot of uh, hands-on training like uh, makeup workshop, skincare workshop and then we had uh, safety trainings, you know. Uh, we had also CPR trainings. Oh. You know, yes, we had all these trainings right. in our pageant. First aid trainings. So these are the trainings that the intellectually challenged can join because it's more on practical. Yeah, but uh, if it's theory, uh, we had uh, the twenty-one days self transformation training, public speaking training. Now these are all catered uh, catered for the women which are differently able. Okay. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Now this is the second season you're doing this pageant this yes. year, right? Yes. Can you tell us about um, a story that stood out for you for one of your women? Okay. Um, I'm very proud to say that all six girls um, th- they became really famous after the pageantry. From <laughs> last year? Yeah, from last okay. year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I have this girl, uh, uh, yeah. She uh, she has um, she's really tall. Uh, she has physical deformities, and uh, she she her her self confidence is really low. But right after the pageantry, uh, two uh, modeling agency caught her the way she walked. Her catwalk was on point. And they contacted me. Can I have her for KL Fashion Week? Is she available? So these are the things that um, made me to not stop continue Miss Amazing because it's not about the eight months of journey. It's about what do you bring home mm. after the pageantry. Now when I and, and I was in Europe at that time. I had all these calls when I was in Europe and they they were like really flying the whole month like can I have this girl for this can I have that girl for that I want to feature her in this magazine I want to feature her in that magazine and they were all out in magazines front page middle page mm-hmm. and and it, it's really a it's a very satisfac- uh, satisfying feeling so I told myself that never stop Miss Amazing because they will definitely uh, gain something after the pageantry mm-hmm. so yeah. this is just a start and it, it gives them Exposure to the rest exposure, of the world. Exposure, yeah. Give them exposure, you know. Sometimes when they come in, they are 
I, I won't say they are they are not proper what so on no but there are, there is a lot that they don't know mm. and we will embark it to them mm-hmm. and believe me there are there were a lot of there are a lot of changes when they left the pageantry the way they carry themselves the way they speak to public mm-hmm. they no more feel they are down to earth you mm-hmm. know what i mean they always feel that ah yeah i know you you're from miss amazing yes i am you know they started they they they, they are pre- they, i i still engage them for miss amazing too mm-hmm. on and off they come and help me out in uh, whatever that i need from them. Oh yeah. so you like the proud mama with so <laughs> many girls yeah. under you. Last year for my for my speech i did say that i've got two boys and uh, 14 girls. <laughs> so now i add on another seven girls <laughs> this year <laughs> because i i don't have girls. Uh-huh. So yeah i look at them i look at all of them as my my babies lah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But with the seven girls this year uh, mm-hmm. and with the pandemic and all that how are we continuing miss amazing malaysia this year okay honestly you know sometimes we can like i can talk like oh i'm strong i'm empowered i'm this and that but there are times that i do feel really down you know i mean we are humans right so when the when the uh, pandemic started i mm. i i nearly gave up mm. because there were some um sponsors back up Mm. They back out and said that we we apologize we we can't uh, be the presenter for you or we can't we, and we can't be the sponsor for you for this year. So I I I get not that I gave up but I felt that I had, felt disappointed. I felt I very guess. disappointed. I had I felt that there is no support. So, so and most of the companies that had supported us last year, they closed down. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and um, that triggered me as well. Then I told myself that if you don't start, it will never happen. Just have an audition first. Yeah. And on the first day of audition, uh, it was not as successful as last year. Last year I had about close to thirty over women that came. This year I only had ten women that came for audition. Mm. But after uh, after they have uh, lifted the MCO, then I had uh, girls contacting me. Can I be a part of Miss Amazing? You know. audition has over right. so i told um, i told my pa okay i think uh, we don't need to have audition those that who wants to come and be a part of miss amazing let's go and meet them the the pandemic i mean mco and everything it's just tough for everybody tough right? for everybody and you know women which are uh, differently able right they are, uh, most of the time they, they don't really take control over themselves they mm. have their family they have their parents that keep them in control mm. so At that point, I do understand as well. They they don't really want their 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 kids their their daughters to be part of anything because it was really severe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everybody just wanted to stay safe. I yes. guess. Yes, I'm sure those companies wanted to sponsor you, but they had to, you know, cut yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, everybody was affected. Yes. Um, tell us about this amazing People Academy. Is this yeah. part of your um, Miss Amazing Malaysia? Um. Okay. I I. W- thought of having uh not thought of it's it's going on but in a very small scale mm. amazing people academy is where i would it's more like an engagement center uh an engagement center uh like we can have the intellectually challenged women with the differently able uh to come over it's more like a gym center when you ah. come <laughs> over there would be different different classes that you can choose yourself to be in Okay. So it's like a, a training that you give to all your Miss Amazing Malaysia finalists uh-huh. but in an academy. Yeah, correct. Oh, I see. So what I do is um I'm still working and I'm I'm it is still in progress where I'm working with quite a number of um brands and uh, I collaborate a lot with them asking them to join uh to have these classes in a weekly basis probably in a week twice. So when these girls come over, it's more like an engagement center where they can meet friends. Mm. You know, w- sometimes when you think about an engagement center for differently able, you don't see any. Mm. True. You don't see any. It's all very. Uh, it's all very primary where you have to pay, and then sometimes you cannot. It's just too much for them. I I don't blame I don't blame those that are running a a modeling center to say that it's too much for you because they they cannot cater them according to their needs. 
So in this engagement center, we do collaborate with uh, mentors and trainers that can cope or can can actually suit their their needs. Mm. Right. So it's more like an this academy is more like an engagement center. So is it an NGO? Is it not profi- not for profit or no no no? It's a profitable organization right, right, okay. with a very very minimal fee. Okay okay yeah right okay. But um, you you used to work. Do you still work full time now yes. in the corporate world? Yes, I do. You oh, still goodness. work full time. Yes, <laughs> yes, I still do. Uh, how are you balance balancing everything while working, while being a mother, while being you know uh, the founder of Miss Amazing Malaysia? And, and could you be at work now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, of course, when um, I've been knowing my 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 boss f- for the past six years. So I was the 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 baby of the company. It was a startup back then. So when I joined that company, I I progressed my career, and I left uh-huh. because I wanted to concentrate fully on Miss Amazing. Right. And of course, at that time, um, I did some. I was more like a part time for the company. Uh, what we do is we are a payment gateway company. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, then. Um, I was it was so surprising that my boss was really supportive throughout the pageantry last year. I mean he like kept contact with me uh and he was part of it as well. Uh where he they were one of our sponsors. Oh wow. Us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was a good staff to him maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so he yeah, the, uh movie was one of our sponsors last so year. So you left them and then you were part time. Are you back full time now? Or? Yes, I'm back full time now. Okay. My boss approached me, he said, Do you wanna come back? Yes, I want to. Yeah. Right. So uh how do I balance this? Um I'm a sales executive. I mean I'm a sales executive, so uh most of the time I mean I, I'm in the office in the morning then while I'm meeting my clients while waiting for them then if there's anything that I need to update in Miss Amazing then I do it at the same okay. time okay. Yeah. but I, I don't I don't um, I don't compromise I mean I don't compromise when it comes to my work I take it really seriously at the same time Miss Amazing is also something that I can do it together while I'm working so you do everything 100% yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you think your corporate background has actually helped you with the organizing this whole pageantry and the academy and Definitely all that. Definitely yes, because yeah. being in a in a sales environment, sales industry, uh, you meet a lot of people. Mm. So it's all about how y- it's all about how you communicate with them. So while speaking about what I do and how I can help them uh, for their business, and I also tell them that do you know that I have this uh, project called Miss Amazing, <laughs> you know <laughs> and. Uh, uh, so it's all about network, I networking. Networking, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. so it's always so okay. This is a, a payment gateway products and everything. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no, <laughs> but Menika, what advice would you give to parents with differently abled children? Yeah, um, very importantly is allow them to be themselves. Allow them to do what they like to do. If you keep them in control, thinking that uh, this is everything is going to damage them, then they will not have a chance to, I won't say girl, they will not have a chance to experience something new. Mm. Mm. Don't always treat them like a child. They are women. Mm. Treat them like a woman. Speak to them. Speak to them like an adult. I know that. I mean, intellectually challenged women, uh, their milestones are way lesser. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you need to treat them like a baby. When these girls come for Miss Amazing, I will not allow their parents to get in the class. Oh, really? Yes. Please be seated outside. Your daughter has her hands. She could eat by herself. So, when they started um, feeling the adulthood, believe me, one or two spoke about their crush and their boyfriends to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you communicate with them like how you communicate to your friend. So, they will feel that they are just like you. 
Right. Yeah. Mm. So for parents that have humans which are differently able, don't always keep them at home because thinking about what the society have to say, you know, or, or protecting them, yeah, too protecting much. them, yeah. or you don't go out, you know, uh, you you don't need to engage yourself, engage yourself in this event because I don't want them to be talking about you. No, it's it's if you if you give them, encourage them, mm. dress them well, you know, make them feel good about themselves. I think protect, yes, but don't over protect, right? It's okay to protect. I mean, even at this age, uh, my dad sometimes take control. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but and I'm sure you still are very protective over Sanjeev as well. Both uh. my my older boy is sixteen, and and I'm. I still call him baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in public when I say baby, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, you can protect them, but allow them to grow up. Mm. 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 Don't and suffocate them. Yes. Right. But what would you say to a parent who think that you know, uh, it's not good to put my differently able child into a, a pageant like that for them to compete against each other? Okay. Um. I would say if you don't compete with each another, even in school, you do have exams. Mm. You are competing with each another, right? Correct. Mm. Yes. So even in life, all right, have a healthy comp- competition. So being in the in Miss Amazing is a healthy competition. You, it's not about uh, I'm better than you or you're better than me. It's about how do how did we gain that knowledge that we learn together? How are we embracing it to ourselves? Right. Yeah. So healthy competition is better than not being, not competing at all with each another. Then where do you stand? Right. You don't grow at all. You don't right? grow at all. Yeah. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't feel the self sense of achievement. Right. You, you do. You know, like now, why why am I still working? I can choose not to. But I want to feel the self sense of achievement that you have achieved something in your in your career. Everything that I do, I always want to have the self sense of achievement. It's for me. Mm. So when you do it for yourself, then you can deliver deliver it to the rest. Right. So competition, it's all about bringing out the best version of yourself. Of yourself. Yes. Okay. Bringing out the best version of yourself. Correct.